I'm about to give a full breakdown of how much money I made as a fantasy author in 2022. I've benefited a lot from other authors being transparent about the business side of their writing. So it's my hope that this video will help you better understand how to make a living from your writing. Now, this is certainly not an exercise in me bragging. I actually feel very nervous to share these figures. I still feel like I'm very early on in my career. I haven't been super successful. I'm not like a big hit or anything yet, but even though I'm nervous, I really wanna go ahead and kind of share this stuff. My goal with this channel is to kind of document the process of my writing journey and to bring you along for the ride as well. So I'm going to put my nerves aside and just go for it. Also, I think money shouldn't be this taboo topic that no one talks about. It is such a extremely important part of all of our lives and it really is beneficial for us to be as transparent and open when we talk about it as possible. Saying that one last caveat before I get into it, you shouldn't equate money with your self-worth as a writer or your self-worth in general. We don't get into this writing game because we are you know, trying to get as much money as possible. We're doing it because we're in pursuit of great stories. And money is useful to the extent that it allows you to do that. So let's get into the breakdown. And at the end of the video, I'll share four key lessons I learned that are related to money and writing over the last year. So in 2022, I only published one new story, Siege of Treblin. This was a interactive fiction fantasy video game where you are the ruler of a medieval city that is under siege. This was published by Choice of Games on April 14th, 2022. And it's where the bulk of my writing income came from last year. Now, even though Choice of Games is a video games publisher, they operate the exact same way as most traditional book publishers. You get a upfront advance of money, which is spread over several different milestones. So I got the first payment in the advance uh, when they greenlit me in mid 2020. And then I got further installments of that payment as I hit different milestones throughout the writing. Altogether, my advance was seven and a half thousand US dollars. That was split out over different installments in 2020, 21, and the very final payment in January of 2022 was of $2,000. By the way, even though I live in Australia, I'm gonna be using US dollars throughout this video because I figure most of you probably are more familiar with that currency than Australian dollars. Now, along with that upfront advance, Choice of Games, like most book publishers, also pays royalties. Royalties are a certain percentage of your sales. So for example, if you are getting 15% royalties and your book sells for $10, then you would be getting $1.50 every time one of your books is sold. Typically, publishers pay 15% royalties for hardcover sales, 7.5% for trade paperback, 5% for mass market paperback, 25% for ebook, and 25% for audiobook. Now, there's an interesting nuance here that's really important that you understand this as a writer. You only start earning your royalties once you have earned out your advance. So let's say that you got an advance of $1,000 and your royalty rate is 20%. If your book costs $10 for readers to purchase, then you would be getting royalties of $2 on each sale. But because you need to earn out your advance, this means you would actually need to sell 500 copies of your book, 500 times $2 equals $1,000 covering back that advance before you then actually start earning the royalties on top of what you've already been paid. Now, if you're anything like me when I first discovered about this, you might be thinking, that sounds kind of unfair. It sounds like my publisher is swallowing up all the money that my book is making for them. And you're kind of right. And that's why it's so important to know if the publisher you're going with is bringing you enough value, enough exposure, enough editing capabilities to make it worthwhile going with that smaller percentage. Because sometimes it makes sense to go with a smaller percentage if you're gonna have a larger total number of sales from this thing but it is also a good reason why a lot of people go down the self-published pathway. And for me personally, I have self-published three novels. I've had the traditional publishing experience of publishing the game. So I've kind of explored both routes and there are definite pros and cons to each of them. So it's just important to be aware of that. Okay, so bringing it back to Siege of Treblin, my royalty rate was 25%. When my game launched on April 14th, it was priced at $3.99 during the launch week period. And in that launch week, it sold $13,419.45, which equates to about 3,363 copies. After launch week, its price was raised back up to $5.99 and sales declined, which is very, very typical. You usually see a big spike of sales during launch week, and then it sort of declines. And then if your game or your story finds a following, hopefully that slowly levels out to a nice long tail over the duration of the story's life. Okay, so going through the months from the launch, in April, it sold 5,439 copies, in May, it sold 1,212 copies. In June, it sold 854 copies. And in July, it sold 577 copies and finally broke even on the advance. So that was the first month that I received royalties for my game. Around about this time, my editor also reached out and asked if I wanted to write some expansions or add-ons for the game because it was doing really well. This isn't something they necessarily offer to everyone in the games they publish, but they thought that the game could kind of do with something like this. 
So I thought about a couple of different ideas. In the end, I decided to go with a optional cheats and add-ons guide. So these are basically things that you can purchase if you enjoy the game and you just want to like not worry about the stats or whatever, or if you just want to figure out like how to access all the different storylines in it. I kind of wrote this guide for people who are after that experience. I was paid a flat fee of $240 for this plus royalties. So by the end of November, because I don't actually have the data for December sales yet, the data is delayed by a month, CG Treblin had sold 10,242 copies plus 2,019 copies of the expansion package. Altogether, that's 12,261 total combined sales for a total income in 2022 of $5,567.51. So CG Treblin was my biggest writing income stream of 2022, but it wasn't my only one. Before I get into that though, I wanna let you know that I have put together a free ebook called Five Lessons That Transformed My Writing. You can read it for free on my website. Just use the link in the description down below to check it out. So apart from CG Treblin, I also earned $214 in royalties from my three self-published novels, these guys here. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but considering that these books came out in 2019 and 2020, I was pretty happy that they were continuing to bring in sales and continuing to get new readers after all these years. Like I said before, most of your sales for your books will come in a big spike around the launch period, and then they'll kind of settle down to a bit more of a plateau after that. I also didn't run any ads or any big promotional drives for these books. The only promotion I gave them was just mentioning them in YouTube videos like this, or people sort of just going onto my website and organically discovering them from that. So in a sense, they were sort of passive income, which was pretty cool. I also did some freelance book editing this year, along with some cover design, which netted me about $2,411. The big highlight here was editing this self-published finance book by one of my favorite financial bloggers. And for this book, I basically did the cover design, the interior formatting, and the blurb writing, along with the actual editing for it as well. What started as a kind of basic book editing job pretty much turned into me producing the entire thing and sort of being a book coach for Dave, which was actually really, really fun. And it was super interesting to apply all the lessons I've learned from marketing fiction books to the kind of nonfiction space. And that really paid off because this book became a number one bestseller in Amazon's personal finance category in Australia. And at the time of recording has 58 reviews averaging 4.9 out of five stars, which is really, really cool. So I've had this YouTube channel all the way back since 2018 and I've put out hundreds of videos on it in the years, but it was only in 2022 that the channel finally hit a thousand subscribers and was eligible for monetization. That happened on October 5th, 2022. And by the end of the year, it had grown to four and a half thousand subscribers, which is very, very cool. So the main YouTube revenue source for me was AdSense, which are those little ads that play either before or during the videos you watch. Every time you watch one of those, it actually sends me a couple of cents. So it's a great way to help support the channel, even though I know ads can sometimes be annoying. And then the other source was affiliate links, which is where I provide links to products or services that I really enjoy. And those links basically give me a small commission at no extra cost for you. So again, using those links is a really great way to help me out. Those affiliate links brought in about $226 last year. Now, most YouTubers will do some sort of sponsorship as well to make additional money from their channel. I did no sponsorships in 2022. I really wanted to focus on just putting out the best videos I possibly could. So that was the extent of my revenue source from YouTube. So from all of these different sources combined, my writing brought in a total of $9,457.73 in 2022. Maybe that sounds like a lot to you. Maybe it doesn't sound like much, whatever it is, that's just the figures. And like I said at the start of the video, you know, this is not an exercise of me trying to brag or anything like that. I'm just trying to share where I'm at with my journey so that it can be hopefully useful to you as a writer, wherever you are in your own writing career. And to kind of aid that, here are four key lessons and takeaways that I kind of learned from the money side of writing last year. Number one is to find a day job that complements your writing. As you can probably tell, I didn't earn a full-time income from my writing in 2022. Throughout the year, I was working four days a week at my day job, which is at a financial technology startup. I actually really, really enjoy it. It's super fun. And towards the end of the year, as writing started to bring in more money, I actually went down to three days a week at that day job. I really, really enjoy the day job. It's super fun. I have learned a lot over the time I've been there. And it's a really good compliment for my writing. And the fact that I can just work three days a week there and have plenty of time and energy to focus on my writing is ideal. I strongly encourage you to find something like this for yourself, a day job that is actually a very big compliment and something that helps your writing rather than hinders it. This is actually the reason why I left the architecture industry and moved into this sort of startup tech space. And by doing that, I basically halved my stress, doubled my pay, and actually had more time to write. And the takeaway here is that as a writer, you would be surprised by how valuable your skills can be, especially in high paying industries like tech and finance. Number two, only compare you 
to you. I've got a lot of author friends now and I know that a lot of them make way more money than me, sometimes in the space of like a week. <laughs> now, I could let that depress me, but instead I take it as a sign that they are doing something with their writing or with their business or with their marketing that is more successful than the approaches that I'm using. So rather than let that depress me, it's actually something I take joy in because it means that they have lessons that they can teach me that I can use to learn and level up. Frame comparisons in a way that is positive, in a way that elevates you. Number three, minimize your expenses. If you wanna be a full-time writer, the equation is very simple. Does the money that you make from your writing exceed the amount of money you spend to live? You have to work both sides of those equations. The more frugal you can be, the more freedom it actually gives you to live your ideal lifestyle. For example, I've got friends who work five days a week at really, really high paying jobs, but they actually end up blowing a lot of their money because they're stressed and they need to relax outside of their job. And as a result, even though I only work three days a week, I actually end up saving more money than them. And that's not even including my writing income outside it. So try to drive your burn rate and your expense rate down as much as possible. And remember, the lower it gets, the easier it becomes to pursue your writing goals. Would you rather go off on that lavish, expensive holiday for a week every year? Or would you rather save that money, allowing you to have the freedom of going down from five days a week to four days a week at your day job and having that extra day to focus on your writing and leveling up your craft. Number four, money is just a tool. Like I said at the start of the video, it's very important to be aware of money. I don't want you to be a starving artist, but ultimately we're not writing novels to be rich. We're doing it because it's one of the most fulfilling and enjoyable experiences that you can possibly have. We're not in pursuit of fame, we're not in pursuit of money, we're in pursuit of telling great stories. So work on the money side of things, but remember the entire end point of earning money from your writing is so that you can sit down at your desk every day and be excited to spend your time writing, exploring these different worlds, exploring the characters you've created and seeing where your stories take you. So if you're with me on the journey, if you're also someone who is in pursuit of great stories, then to you I say, keep writing and keep striving. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.